here in Paris. It's a big exaggeration. Uh, it's coming from Romax in Italy, the Tosca comes in Italy. They are antiques. They are very, very old. And here you're going to see it's much more recent. And uh, in France, in Paris, we use the word catacombs for anything and everything. We're going to visit in the first part of the tour the ancient quarries of Paris. As you can see, it's just stones, no bones, but we still talk about catacombs. And we also talk about catacombs to talk about what we call the ossuary, so the sanctuary of bones, because os means uh, bones. So yes, you're going to see two different parts. Are we just going to make a little passage for the other group? No, but I'm sincere in my group now. I don't know. I don't know. I'm at 13 hours. No, but I'm going to stop now. Pardon, but... Yeah, there's no problem. Normally, we should have a decalage of a minute. Yeah, that's the question. On va se mettre là-bas, après on va se laisser passer. D'accord, ok. <rire> D'accord. Ok, okay. so we're going to move right here. Voilà, alors je vous recommande. Je vous aide. Alors, comme on a un gros groupe, et qu'il y a des visiteurs individuels, They can have like 19 people in a group, which is a lot too much. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult. I don't know if you took the metro before, but this is an avant goût of the metro, one of those people. But to come back to the catacombs, uh, we're also going to see that it's kind of ancient history, but also very recent history. And actually, still today, the story of the catacombs is too writing. Uh, but to come back a long time ago, 4,500 years ago, uh, Paris was under sea, completely. So the soil of Paris, uh, it's composed of a wide variety of sediments, including a lot of seashells. And that created, over the time, a very good quality stone they decided to call Lutetian stone, because Paris was called Lutetia. So basically, it was just the building material at the beginning. They were just building the houses with this uh, limestone in the antiquity. But then, in the Middle Age, uh, they needed more rocks, because they wanted to build all of the great monuments, uh, such as the castle. So they started to dig underground. And that's when the problem started to happen because they were digging under Paris. And you have to know that the workers of the time, they didn't pay attention to any safety work at all. So they were digging under houses, roads, roads, bridges, uh, they didn't care. So the Parisians, they started to experience collapses. So at the beginning, it was near Paris, and it was only peasants and merchants that were going to Paris, and they were swallowed by food. So the king didn't really care because there were only peasants and merchants. But then the collapses they started to happen in the rich district of Paris. And then the king had a concern and he decided to call upon the services of his own mathematician, Antoine Dupont, and they decided to create what we call the general inspection of quarry. So their goal was to consolidate all of the quarries uh, and the heights. And here, for example, uh, you have a consolidation wall. You're supposed to consolidate the same in the lower heads to avoid the collapses. Uh, and you have what we call the quarry unit signature. So basically, you just have the number of the pillar, the initial of the man in charge, the architect, and the date. You're going to see plenty of those plates. So the demand is going to be one. We're just making a little stop here. <laughs> So here you can see it's a street name, and it's because uh, in the well the ancient quarries of Paris you have read the lining topography of the 18th century. Uh, have you heard of the Haussmann's work? No. Uh, well, Haussmann it was a great architect again, and uh, in the late uh, 20th century they decided to rebuild Paris. Alors passé. Bonne visite. So which which king was it that that you were speaking of? Louis XVI, one of the okay. most well known. And we're going to see he was here when they decided to create uh, this uh, general inspection of quarry. But he was also the king in charge when they decided to create the ossuary, 
was not my laughter. So, uh, yeah. A lot of. <laughs> <laughs> so, when they decided to rebuild Paris and enlarge the streets uh, to make Paris more secure, uh, they decided to change the street names. So, uh, in the ancient catacombs of Paris, uh, you is the, the only place where you have the ancient street names. Like today, for example, it was Avenue René Coty, uh, Avenue Montsouris in the 18th century, but today it's Avenue René Coty. So, nothing to do with. Okay. So here, uh, it's what we call a service well, a service shop. So at the beginning, it was only uh, supposed to help us to uh, well, bring back the rocks to the surface. And actually, I'm going to show you a picture of the light of the lifting system they used at the time. Because it was very... Interesting. So you have the quarry, and then you can see the shop, the service well, and above you can if you look in the first place, there is a map. He's walking in a wheel like a hamster in a cage, and that's how they were bringing back the walls right now. Uh, but the most interesting thing about the swell, uh, the first use was to bring the rocks, but then when they decided to create the ossuary, uh, they dumped the bones through those wells. This was unscrupulous but faster than taking uh, one bones by one. And here, this picture, this is also a service well, but it's not in Paris. That would be too dangerous because it's not closed, as you can see. But in Paris, for example, this service well is leading a boat to this place. Uh, so here you have the station d'Enfer Rochereau, and here you have that place. So you can recognize them with the EGC sign on it. So maybe you walk on that one. Do you like uh, scary and gross stories? Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this one's about a well, of course. Uh, so a long time ago, just after the creation, uh, of the general inspection of quarry, uh, you had some inspectors. They were walking in the tunnels I'm right now, and they found a well just like this one, but full of cat skulls. So they found it was weird. So they made some researches, and they found out that well was leading in a court of a very well-known restaurant. They were known to serve rabbit plates. So they that they just pleased. And the rabbit plate like can't meet for years. So that was a scandal. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, they were saying you had to say the But I had to cut the cups like two. It's okay. It tastes like chicken, too. Yeah. <laughs>
decisión de comer. that the part we're going to visit today is less than two kilometers of tunnels. But the whole network, just for Paris, it's more than 300 kilometers. That's huge. And the rest of this network, the rest of the tunnels, uh, it's completely forbidden to public. The access is completely forbidden. And that's why it's called the Forbidden Catacombs. Maybe you've heard a bit of the Forbidden Catacombs. Uh, well, we're in France, so if it's forbidden, they want to do it, of course. Uh, so since the 70s, uh, you have that movement of people that was creating, and they call themselves Les Catafila. Because filia, it's uh, in Latin, the, the, the verb love, so people who love the cata, the catacombs, like the catacombs of the quarries, so. <laughs> the catafiles. And the catafiles, uh, well, they like to spend time in the forbidden uh, catacombs of Paris, the ancient quarries. Uh, so they are listening to music, uh, drinking beers, and everything. I'm going to show you a picture from it's the most uh, representative of those people. Uh, here. So here, for example, they're just making pancakes. But 18 meters underground, so you can see they put the eggs and everything. Well, and that's happening right now uh, and every day uh, no. under Paris. That's just normal. But one of their favorite games uh, is trying to sneak in the museum, the official site, uh, through the Forbidden Catacombs by digging some tunnels. And here, you can see there is a cement line. Uh, it's because a few years ago, the catafiles, they decided to well, dug a tunnel like this. They get into the museum at night. They made a little party here. They, well, they listen to music and everything. Mm -hmm. And then they get back to the Forbidden Catacombs. So the general inspection of quarries, they decided to put that cement plot to avoid any other illegal entrances. But that's happening sometimes. That's wild. <laughs> again because there's a one more writing the history of the catacombs today but here uh, we have to come back to some ancient events have you heard of the french revolution mm -hmm. okay. well uh, during the french revolution the revolutionaries they wanted to erase any sign of royalty above but also underground and here on those plates at the beginning you had fleur de lis on each corner fleur de lis is an eminent sign of royalty and here you can see on each corner something has been erased. Because when they came back, they decided to erase all of the floodings. But luckily for us, we have some quarrymen at the time. They decided to cover the floodings with mud so that the revolutionaries couldn't find them. So in the forbidden catacombs only, not here, unfortunately, we have uh, some uh, indicative flakes with the floodings. Mm. So thanks to the quarrymen. So it's supposed to look like this. <laughs> But this is 
is uh, one of the work of the general inspection of quarry. They were digging those holes in the walls uh, just to see if they were fit enough. If the quarry men they did a good work. And here you can see, well, it's pretty deep, so it's a good work. We're safe. Uh, they are not in trenches, it's not people deciding to take away rocks. Uh, it's to let the uh, well, rocks breathe a bit. Okay. So, and it's very Catacombs. So sometimes, if you're very lucky, you can see some kind of fights with that techno music walking here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> near Paris uh, as a home, but uh, it was uh, in the 19th century, then a bit in the 20th century, but never under Paris. It was too complicated and uh, there is a police unit that was created uh, to uh, survey the tunnels under Paris. So it's yeah, more complicated than we think, even if it's 300 kilometers of tunnels, uh, it can be, uh, well, yeah, it can be dangerous too. In the quarries near Paris, it's more safe, uh, you have more space too. So yes, sometimes you have less people, they, they make a home here. But look at the files, since they like to organize big events sometimes, and uh, especially their favorite biggest fest called the Goonies Fest, uh, yeah, <laughs> with the movie. <Yep. laughs> well, uh, uh, it's uh, for seven days. So they brought their sleeping bags and uh, they can they stay in the catacombs for seven days. And that's bringing some problems because some of them sometimes they're sleeping for three days or you know, during their free time and they're eating in the catacombs. So it's bringing rats. Mm. And that's a big problem because they're becoming bigger and bigger. It's like a horror movie. But <laughs> it's going to be very bad. Uh, so here, you have some lights, uh, because you have this indicative plate. Uh, it's not, again, the most interesting, but maybe you've heard of the uh, French workers' cliché that they're a bit lazy and they don't really think before they, they do. Well, here, it's supposed to remind us that uh, Marie de Médicis, also the mother of Louis XVI, she wanted to build a waterway above, to bring some water to the castle that she was living in and uh, to some public fountains. But they didn't think that well, making waterway above some very dangerous quarries wasn't a good idea. So they had to dry uh, the waterway after only five years of use because it was creating leaks everywhere. So it was completely useless. But when they decided to create the other one we, we just took, maybe you notice there is kind of a landscape at the moment. Well, they had to create it because when they started the work, they didn't think, oh, there is a metro station under us, so maybe we should think about that. They didn't think about that. So they dug into a metro station and they had to build that landscape on purpose. And here, uh, again, it's an inscription from the General Institute of Quarry. You can see Fonti. So it's a sinkhole, so basically that area was collapsing. And here you have this page here. You can see the creation of a fonti of a sinkhole. So that's the beginning when they really have to <laughs> do some work, like putting some cement and everything. And if they're not doing anything, well, it's becoming bigger, and here everyone's dead.
until we reach the place uh, that we call l'atelier in French, to the workshop, because that's what we feel like the most in exploitation area of the time. Uh, and here you can see the first method they used uh, when they were digging the tunnels. It's called the turn pillar because one can turn around. But you can see it was letting a big amount of rock in place that therefore wasn't extracted, so it wasn't efficient enough. So they decided to do something else. Right here, they were digging those large alleys, which was already uh, not very safe. And then it wasn't enough, so they decided to dig on both sides to consolidate the, the thing. They decided to make those dry stone walls that we call ag in French. They put all the back fin and the waste of rock at the back. And then they decided to consolidate the thing by making those pillars that we call piliabras, so pillars with arms, because they're putting one rock on another with the force of their arms. So it was much more efficient but much more dangerous. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Slowly dripping through. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to know if you had any questions about the timeline or things you heard before you came in the site. Because usually when we think about the catacombs, we think about the ossuary mosque, and the quarry spot uh, can be a bit uh, weird. <laughs> you. Well, if you have any questions that comes up to your mind,